striking and powerful paintings conveying a message of love. We'll show you how this mural artist is literally making her mark on DC. Plus, powerhouse female performers from the world of radio, TV, and music come together celebrating the Year of the Woman at the 19th Annual Four Sisters Only. Those stories coming up. The News Rundown is straight ahead. We Are Washington starts now. Welcome to We Are Washington. MC Light, Belladonna, Ari Lennox. It was a powerful lineup of female artists that got everyone moving and shaking at the 19th annual Four Sisters Only. But as we'll see, the event was much more than just entertainment. And later, DC artist Lisa Marie Thalhammer, who counts Lady Gaga among her many fans, is making quite an impression as she changes the landscape of the city with large-scale public art designed to delight and inspire. We'll meet her coming up, but first, here's the news rundown. A stylish, affordable housing community is now open in the heart of the H Street corridor at the former site of the RL Christian Library. Mayor Bowser cut the ribbon on the Baldwin Apartments at 1300 H Street Northeast. The building is comprised of 33 units of deeply affordable housing. We know as a city, we have a lot of great things going for us. In a lot of ways, these are the best of times in Washington, D.C. Uh, but we also know that we have a responsibility and the ability to do more, to bring more people along in the prosperity of Washington, D.C. I'm thrilled to be here because this is a project that I think, I think, frankly, the rest of the city should try to model what we've done here. Um, you know, mayors have a lot of priorities. They got to do a lot of different things, keep, keep tabs on a lot of different things going on. But I think since day one, what I have seen our mayor focus on more than almost anything has been affordable housing. And this project is another example of that. The mayor says the district needs to produce an additional 36,000 units of affordable housing by 2025. Infants and toddlers are joining the Ketchum Elementary School community in Ward 8. Mayor Bowser joined parents and teachers at the opening of a new child development center at Ketchum for children ages 0 to 3. One, two, three. The center is part of the mayor's push to create 1,000 new infant and toddler child care seats in D.C. The young people next door. Uh, the new generation, the next generation of Washingtonians, uh, we know this is a huge boost uh, for the youngest members of the D.C. community, youngest members of DCPS. During the ribbon cutting ceremony, Mayor Bowser announced that the district is receiving a federal grant of $10.6 million to improve early childhood programs and services. Residents have the chance to weigh in on the nomination of Lewis Fairby to be the new D.C. Schools Chancellor. At-large Councilmember David Grosso, who chairs the Education Committee, is hosting a series of public roundtables leading up to the vote on the nomination of Fairby by the D.C. Council. The roundtables are designed to give the council and the nominee himself a chance to hear directly from residents about their ideas for the city schools. The district's Books from Birth program is celebrating its third anniversary of providing free books to our youngest residents. Since the program launched in 2016, nearly 800,000 books have been mailed to babies and children across all eight wards. It's great to have books sent to people's homes, but the ability for the library to um, go beyond the walls of the library, because we know that there are incredible barriers to participation. Not everyone can go to the Mount Pleasant Library on Lamont Street. Uh, not everyone can go to the beautiful buildings that we have. For some people, it is just simply too difficult. Books from Birth is a way for the library to sort of tear down the walls and make it into people's homes. The Books from Birth program was created to help tackle early childhood literacy. The partnership between D.C. Public Library and D.C. Department of Health enables families of babies born in D.C. to enroll in the program before leaving the hospital. The District of Columbia's unique history will be the focus of a new Institute of Politics and Policy at the University of the District of Columbia. Mayor Bowser celebrated the launch of the new nonpartisan institute that will introduce students to careers in policy and politics. Former Mayor Sharon Pratt 
is leading the effort to build out the programming for the Institute. The Institute will engage a new generation of leaders and prepare them for careers in public service. And what's more, it will showcase the unique history of Washington, D.C., establish platforms for making our local history more accessible uh, to those who have lived here for generations and those uh, who are learning about our city just now. We do something that creates a platform that rediscovers, that unearths the history of our city so that it is intriguing and accessible to contemporary audiences, particularly engaging our students uh, in that process. Giant Food and Sibley Memorial Hospital, just two of D.C.'s top companies that participated in the launch of a new program called Employer Engagement 100. The goal of the program is to proactively engage and support D.C.-based businesses to better understand the opportunities and challenges employers face in the district. Mayor Bowser kicked things off with a series of rapid-fire discussions focused on key industries and their contribution to the district's economy. It was anything but business as usual at DC Econ Unplugged. The Office of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development hosted the event to give residents an opportunity to connect with the services and resources that grow DC's economy. From arts to housing, transportation and environment, a wide variety of district agencies were available to speak directly with residents about how to grow their business in DC. We know, and the mayor has made this very clear, that making sure that every single uh, D.C. resident, whether you've been here for five minutes or five generations, frankly, has access to quality housing. And so, you know, we're going to be sort of uh, initiating a few new things in 2019. We're going to be doubling down on our housing production trust fund. We're going to be thinking about things like our home purchase assistance program, which helps first-time home buyers in the District of Columbia. And we've got sort of some different programs or different approaches around some small landlord or tenants and how to really help them provide housing as well. So housing is going to be a continued theme in 2019. DC Econ Unplugged also featured a panel discussion on keeping DC nightlife thriving to ensure it continues to strengthen the local economy. The goal of reducing air pollution is fueling a new proposal to recognize February 4th as bus to work day in DC. Ward 4 Council Member Brandon Todd drafted the resolution to encourage residents to use public transportation. For every passenger mile traveled, buses are twice as fuel efficient as private cars. Transportation represents the second largest source of carbon emissions in the district. So we have an incredible opportunity to advance our climate goals while also cutting down on harmful pollutants that impact regional air quality. No visit to Georgetown would be complete without seeing the 97 steps between M Street and Prospect made famous by the 1973 movie, The Exorcist. Now the Exorcist steps have been granted historical landmark status, but it wasn't just the classic horror movie that earned them the distinction. The Historical Preservation Review Board cited the old Capitol Traction Station building on the side of the steps, which was built at the end of the 19th century as a hub for streetcar companies in establishing the new landmark. DC's diehard Caps fans now have a championship ring to call their own. Team captain Alex Ovechkin presented the city of Washington, D.C. with a championship ring encased in a plaque that included the Capitals' official Stanley Cup team photo. The ring was first presented to local firefighters who escorted the bling to the Wilson Building where it will be on display for fans to enjoy forever. All right, very busy show today. There's a lot happening, actually, uh, but we do have a minute to just recap some of the items that we discussed today. Uh, the Capitals giving a championship ring to the city. That's a beautiful thing, because I remember how excited everybody was for the, not only the, the winning of the Stanley <laughs> Cup, but the parade that, that happened afterwards. So a nice token for the city that people can enjoy and, and go uh, take a look at. And from what we experienced yes. watching the fans who came out, who, who packed the streets to, yeah. to watch the last game outside. Um, I think that uh, DC really earned their championship ring. Absolutely, so. <laughs> 100%. Exorcist steps back in the news. I mean, yeah. this movie was made in 1973. And uh, we're still talking about it today. It is kind of spooky, I will say. <laughs> I mean, um, but it's a it's a great landmark, and it's yeah. it's something that you know visitors do enjoy being able to experience seeing that, and it's it's kind of a iconic film. So great that it got that yeah. landmark status. All right, the Baldwin. Great to have affordable housing like this. A building dedicated completely to, to affordable housing, in the H Street corridor. And some of the units, um, I believe, are 
you know, big enough for a family. I think three bedroom yeah. also to accommodate families. Um, and what a great place. We found out all, thi all things are connected in this universe from. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> from, Full from circle. From Baldwin. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, who was down there? Our friend, Nikki Moore, yeah. who we recently profiled, uh -huh. great uh, DC comedian here. Yeah. We had just gotten to talking <laughs> about the fact that she was an affordable housing manager and here she is coming out of retirement for. <laughs> Finally today, books from birth. Um, I think it's great. I think one aspect of this story that's great is that they get parents to sign up before they leave the hospital. <laughs> when I mean, there's a lot to think about when you're bringing home a newborn baby. I like that they get that right out of the way. Your, your child is going to need books. We're going to tackle the issue of child literacy here in D.C., and I think that that's a great program, a great way to start it off. Yeah, it's so nice, and um, I would say, um, as a parent with kids in college, I would say reading to babies yes. is probably, you know, some of the most treasured memories you will ever have, so Absolutely. great program. Yep. All right, well, coming up after the break, mural artist Lisa Marie Thalhammer is making her mark on D.C. with attention-grabbing large-scale works that are lighting up district neighborhoods. And later in the show, it's all about beauty, empowerment, and some unforgettable performances. Come with us as we check out for Sisters Only. Public works of art have a way of defining a neighborhood in every way possible, from providing a landmark for directions to changing people's attitudes about their surroundings, their neighbors, where they call home. Someone who understands that is mural artist Lisa Marie Thalhammer. It's why she's made creating powerful, striking messages centered on love, acceptance, and empowerment her mission. Now, here's her story. Murals take a ton of time, they take a ton of money, they take a ton of energy, they take a ton of courage to just really get out there on the street and paint. I know that making the murals helps make the city a better place and helps improve the community. I see it, you know, I experience it, I live it. I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, right outside of Ferguson in Florissant. My grandpa opened our family's truck stop in the 70s and you know there weren't any fast food places in it it was a you know homegrown old school kind of diner i worked at my family's truck stop from a very young age and i just really enjoyed meeting people getting to know people learning about travelers and people's journeys i also kind of dealt with a you know a a good amount of what we would call sexual harassment at the time. As a young woman trying to navigate through a very heavily male dominated environment, and I think it informed a lot of my work. And so I did do a whole series of, you know, women with trucks earlier on in my, in my creative practice. I had always watched my mother craft things. You know, my mother was probably my earliest creative influence. So I wanted to go to a program, a summer program at the Art Institute of Chicago, but it was kind of expensive and it was a struggle in our family to like send me, send me to that program. Well, after a lot of negotiation with my father, we made a deal that if he sent me to the summer program, then I would paint a mural on his garage. And so my father was actually my very first mural commission. And I'm still to this day painting murals on garages. So wow. that's kind of cool. So I had graduated from art school in the Midwest and I thought I want to be a painter. I need to go to New York. Uh, and then I came to Washington to visit a cousin of mine, Keith Fritz, who was a furniture designer. And I just fell in love with Washington. You have the museums, you have a huge culture industry, you have the embassies, people here who really value and respect art. The mural making process is very different. You know, we are making sure we have permission to paint the walls. We're getting public permits. We're involving the community. First, I always visit the site because really I want to understand the audience. Then I will go to the sketching phase of the project and I'll sketch out a couple different ideas. The mural making process is really for me about building community and when you put all those elements together and you put a vibrant 32 foot tall empowered woman on the side of a building, the neighborhood just gets better. 
People respect that corner, they respect the art, they respect each other. If you put positive intentions and positive healing vibes and energy into a place, you see the results of it. Uh, when I first painted Boxer Girl in 2009, there were not really very many murals in Washington, D.C. The D.C. Commission on the Arts and Humanities had just created this Public Art Building Communities Initiative, and I was one of the first grant recipients of that program. And so it was really the beginning of what then birthed all these beautiful murals that you're seeing pop up all over Washington. My love mural is my favorite artwork that I've ever made. And the reason being is that I've seen so much joy. I've seen the love mural inspire others in a way that you don't see very often. You know, it's, it's really uh, rewarding as a creative person to be able to watch on social media all these photos, all these images of people expressing their love and expressing joy. When we paint these murals, we're kind of changing the energetic or spiritual vortex of a place. You know, we're really changing the energy. We're taking a place that was maybe overlooked and transforming it. And the love mural is just such a perfect example of that and how it can really put a neighborhood or put a place, you know, on the map as a destination. If it was easy, everybody would do it. You know, making a painting or making a mural is, is difficult work, you know? When it's finished, it's a great feeling. You know, it's like, oh, wow, you know? And you kind of, then you sort of birth this, this artwork and it has its own life. It's like having a child, you know? You, you create something and then it goes on to live and interact with other people in a way that I don't have control over. In, the end, I just want to keep making and keep painting and, and keep bringing like the color to people's lives. More We Are Washington after the break. Powerhouse female performers from the world of radio, TV, and music light up the stage to celebrate the Year of the Woman at Four Sisters Only. It's the annual event that brings DC women out for business tips, health information, and relationship advice. But most importantly, a great time. MC Light, Belladonna, just two of the acts bringing everyone together at the 19th annual Four Sisters Only. Take a look. Celebrating the year of the woman, we wanted to change the narrative that we don't get along and we throw drinks and we're angry. No, we get it all done. We slay, we pray every day, and we wanted to make sure that everybody was reminded of that. It was so phenomenal to see all these beautiful black women here. Like, it just felt so good. Like, Anything that's um, meant to empower women, I love to be participatory in. So, that's my goal, to be here to support and to uplift and give some inspiration. We look forward to for Sisters Only. It's like, it's like our Super Bowl. Like this is our 19th annual FSO. So we've been reinstilling that story that women, when we are together and we're sharing stories, we change lives. MC Light, MC Light. I'm an old school hip hop head, and she's a pioneer for females, not just for females, but just for the music, the culture, and everything. She's a leader. I rock the party and rock the party. Let me hear you say it. I rock the party and rock the party. I'm gonna perform all the classics. You know, this is this year is the 30th year anniversary for my first record, Light as a Rock. I performed at Kennedy Center not too long ago, and it was a packed house. And so I'm going to do a couple of those songs and um, hopefully have as, as much fun as the audience has. Tell me just a little bit. I know I'm sure you could write a book about it, but how do you see things? 
having changed over the years uh, for women in hip hop from when you were starting out? You know, most of the women that are in the music entertainment and at the top of their game, they're bosses. You know, they're, they're women that run their ship, powerful women that have navigated through this male-dominated industry and really have made a name for themselves and put a lot of people to work and can sustain. done with another fabulous show. How was it you're here closing out the day for, for Sisters Only? Tell me about the show. How was it? It was absolutely amazing. We had a great time, especially we, we played here before. It was a while ago. So to come back again and to see the crowd, to see the women, you know, coming together and enjoying what we do, That's it right. was just another plus. A 10 year anniversary is something that we are definitely embarking upon because as you all know, we have been together for 10 years. So look forward to us celebrating a reunion, new music, Belladonna all day. That's yes. what we're gonna see. Okay, lastly, a very important question. Um, are you looking for possibly a new member who maybe doesn't have so much experience, <laughs> but has a lot of passion? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna give you the tambourine. Okay. We'll the tambourine. <laughs> that I could handle. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much. All right, one last thing today, uh, to return to Lisa Marie Thalhammer and, and her public art that we were talking about earlier uh, in the show. Uh, one thing I discovered in the process of, of, of talking to her and looking at some of her different murals there in the city, there's actually a really, really interesting uh, alley museum, it's called. It's in Blagdad Alley. So it was in 2015 when we started writing grants to the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities for their public art building communities program to begin to paint Black Denali and to begin to sort of transform it into an outdoor museum. We commissioned different artists, different local artists. So I'm not out there just painting on my own, you know, I have my friends and people who I know, artists who I really respect and admire who are part of the DC community. This alley is a place that I had been visiting for years, a place that I had loved a place that I still love and a place that I wanted to give more love to. Well, that is all the time that we have for today, but we'd like to thank you for joining us. It reminds you that we have plenty of features, episodes, things mm -hmm. for you to check out. If you go to YouTube and search Entertain DC, we have, how many, what do you, what do you think it is? Dozens, hundreds at this point? Who do hundreds, you know? Hundreds, hundreds. <laughs> you have to go check it out to find out. All right, thanks for joining us. See you next time.